Hey, 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 this is Cody, and you are tuned in to B-Boy 45, broadcasting from the Seacrest Studios here at Children's Hospital Colorado. I've got my buddy Maya on the line, and Maya, it is another special edition of your show, the latest news to keep you in the groove, and who is on the line with us today? Uh, Anthony Turpel. Anthony, welcome to the Seacrest Studio at Children's Hospital. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing good. How about yourself? Oh, man. We are so much better now that we're talking to you. Uh, Maya, take it away, girl. Um, So, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for calling in. I have been so excited to talk with you. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so my first question for you is, when was the moment you first knew you wanted to be an actor? I would. I was five years old, I would say, and uh, I did a play for The Wizard of Oz, and I was uh, uh, one of the uh, lollipop in the lollipop guild, and uh, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life, and so it kind of just from there, I was like, I always wanted to be an actor. Oh, cool. Mm. Um, so you play Felix in the show Love, Victor, which I love that show. I um, oh, watched, uh, yeah, I watched um, like all both seasons in like a week. So oh, really? I just, <laughs> yeah, I, my mom and I binged watched it together. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, um, and I am so excited for the third season. Um, What is your favorite part of playing Felix? Ooh, my favorite part about playing Felix. Well, I love the character. He's super fun to play, uh, super energetic, super nerdy, uh, and I can relate to that. Um, (laughs) And uh, also the people. I really like the people. Um, just working with everyone and uh, um, getting to hang out with the cast and the crew. Um, yeah, I think I think the people is kind of my favorite thing about kind of everything, to be honest. Oh, cool. Um, so are there any challenges to playing him? Ooh, challenges. Yeah, I sometimes, you know, like uh, uh, there was a huge dramatic switch with season one to season two, Felix, because we went into uh, a lot more uh, deeper conversation. And so season one, Felix was really like super energetic. And so trying to keep that personality, but at the same time deal with like more uh, deeper issues, uh, I would say that was a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, um, so you and the whole cast have um, amazing chemistry. Uh, What is the best part of going to the set every day? Ooh, well, it's definitely the people. um, And I'll give you my favorite moment. My favorite favorite moments are when uh, uh, it's like a super late night and everyone's insanely tired and we're all on our 10th cup of coffee. And it gets like to, like to that loopy point where everyone like is just kind of having fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like those the best. Everyone else hates those, but I I love when I love when it's like going a little a little long and we're all kind of in it together. It's like this. Uh, I don't know. It's just like a really kind of fun moment. Oh, cool. Yeah, the um, like the slap happy phase of being <laughs> sleep deprived. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's uh, it's where you get your like funniest moments on set. I feel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you have any upcoming projects that you can tell us about? Uh, not at the moment. I can't. Uh, mm-hmm. but uh, stay tuned. Who knows? That's all I can really say. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so have you had like a favorite um, experience on um, of, uh, so far in your um, career? Like, huh? Ooh, 
Yeah, I've had a couple. I mean, um, getting my first series regular was a huge thing for me. Um, and that whole experience of, because uh, I was on a Bull and Beautiful for two years. And that's like a soap opera. And that was uh, an incredibly, incredible experience, first of all. And just like super, like it just taught me so much. Um, and uh, so that was, I think, like an amazing moment. Uh, getting Love, Victor's another one. Um, and uh, playing him, uh, meeting f- people that I'll know for the, like the rest of my life. It's really cool. Um, yeah, I kind of, I think just every time I get to work, to be honest, um, especially like as an actor, you know, sometimes work comes and goes. So every time you get to work is kind of a blessing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Oh, gosh. Yeah, Silicon Valley, actually. I was watching Silicon Valley, actually, right before I got on this. Uh, I, I've, been, I've been really loving that show. Um, uh, Parks and Rec, I've also been re-watching, which is yeah. great. And I'm trying to find The Office. So I really want to re-watch that. So uh, uh, eventually I will. But yeah, I've been, I like to binge watch at least like four shows at once. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually watched um parks and rec for the first time when lockdown happened oh really and, yeah and so it then it since i watched it it's been one of my favorite shows it, i love that show so much it's so yeah. good uh, yeah it's the same people who wrote the office which is it's the reason why it's so incredible but uh yeah i uh uh, uh yeah the parks and rec is amazing yeah yeah. Um, so what's the most useless piece of trivia that you know? Oh, gosh. Okay, you want the most useless? Yes. Okay. So uh, is it in the Yosemite? It is, I believe. So in the Yosemite, they have these uh, uh, giant redwood trees, right? And um, basically, th- this, by the way, this is going to be insanely boring. I just want to... Make sure everyone knows. But in the, red, the redwood twink trees, they called it the Wellingtonia um, for uh, the original, the general who beat uh, Napoleon at Waterloo. And then Americans came and they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're going to call it the Washingtonia for George Washington. And then they found out it was the cousin of a sequoia tree. So it was technically a sequoia tree. And so we just call them redwood, the red, uh, redwood trees now or something like that. But that's the most useless and boring fact I know. And I don't know why it stayed in my brain all these years. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you lost me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, every time I say that fact, I lose everybody. That's a, that's a common. Uh, that's a common. <laughs> yeah, that's the most useless fact I know. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to, um, I know like a bunch of, just a bunch of random things about different shows that it never comes up in conversation. So then I make it come up because I was like, <laughs> I can contribute to this part of the conversation. <laughs> can you give me one? Um... Well, now, uh, now I'm blanking on Yeah, I don't mean everything. to put you on the spot. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, now I can't remember anything. I, it happens to be all the time. I completely understand. <laughs> I'm a huge back guy, too, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably as soon as we get off, I'm going to remember something. And That's then... how it always, yep. Always on the car ride home, I'm like, ah, oh, I should have said that. No, I get yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, uh, what cur- what current trend makes absolutely no sense to you? Oh, gosh, I don't understand why crop tops cost more than a regular shirt. It's only half a shirt. It should be <laughs> less. That's my. That's the one thing that genuinely bugs me about. Yeah, it it bugs me. I I just don't like how crop tops uh, cost more than a regular shirt. That's less material. It should cost less. Anyway, that's my that's my one rant. 
I won't go too deep into it. <laughs> I never knew that. So mm. thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. You can be mad at it with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning a lot from this interview. <laughs> you know, I, I try, you know, I'm, I'm trying yeah. to spread the, the crop top uh, phenomenon. Uh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. The fact about what the red, redwood. The redwoods. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. learned that on a, on a tour through Yosemite. I don't know. Anyway. I was going to say, I'm sorry, but I already don't remember it because I just <laughs> got lost. <laughs> uh, I completely understand. I understand. <laughs> no, I <don't> like <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm still trying to think of a useless fact about the show for no, you. Yeah. So if I remember it, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> um, so uh, what terrible movie do you secretly love? Oh, gosh. Well, okay. The obvious answer is The Room. I love The Room. My, oh, you know what? I'll give one most people probably don't know. Um, there's a director, his name is Neil Breen. And he uh, is kind of like Tommy Wiseau, but um, is it like on that same kind of category. Um, and so uh, Neil Breen's movie, Double Down, is one of the most hilarious bad movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, so I'll say double down for sure. Okay, I'm writing this down because I you never heard would, of that. Oh, it's a blast. It's so funny. It is, I, I won't say anything about it. You you watch it yourself. But Neil Breen's Double Down is an incredible film. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, I'll have to find that. Yeah. No, trust me, you'll find it. It's <laughs> It's great. It's great. I promise you. Cool. Um, yeah, uh, the, um, movie that, uh, it's not a secret that I love it. Like I tell everybody, it's like one of my favorite movies, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I should actually be admitting that. <laughs> um, it's called, it's called Ishtar. Ishtar? Um, yeah, it came out in, I think. I think it was the 80s mm -hmm. and my mom actually introduced my sister and I to it um, mm -hmm. a few years ago because uh, she saw it when it first came out with um, her parents, our grandparents, mm -hmm. and they were the only three people in the movie theater cracking up. Really? So, yeah. So they were the like the only ones um like the only ones in the world that actually liked it because uh -huh. um, it's actually listed as one of the worst movies wait i, um, I gotta write this down now wait what is it called yeah. ishtar ishtar yeah i gotta check this one out yeah and I'm then my mom told like told my sister and i about it a couple times and then um a few years ago we actually watched it and we had some friends over and started watching it with them and my mom and my sister and i were cracking up and our friends were just sitting there like not saying anything not <laughs> So then we just were like, okay, fine, we'll stop it. And we watched it the next day, the three of us, and we were just cracking up. Like, we were crying from laughing. Yeah, how dare they not like bad movies? They're the best. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I also love watching bad Christmas movies. Oh, Oh, I, I, okay, I've, that's, first of all, very specific genre. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I've seen a couple of those and, um, I, actually, I, you know, I don't want to like trash movies, but sorry, go on. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, I was just going to say, we, we don't celebrate Christmas, but we joke that our Christmas tradition is watching bad Christmas movies. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> I gotta start that. That that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, but Ishtar, if you're looking for a movie that just 
um, will make you cry from laughing. I suggest that one. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. If you like it, if you don't like it, you'll just be sitting there, like not (laughs) just thinking it's the world's worst movie. I'll I'll suffer through it. I'll suffer through it. I'll get back to you. (laughs) <laughs> okay, yeah, and I will watch both of the movies you suggested. Oh, you're you'll love Neil Breen. You'll love Neil Breen. He's, <laughs> you'll you'll see. You'll see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um so what is the strangest thing that has ever happened to you on the set? Oh, strangest thing that's ever happened to me. I will say I was, uh, so I'm terrified of being late uh, because I'm very good at it. And so (laughs) I, uh, uh, so what I used to do is I used to wake up, uh, or I'm sorry, not wake up. I used to stay up till 5 a.m. because that's when the studio opened. And so I'd stay up till 5 a.m. and then go inside and then sleep in my trailer until they needed me which sometimes they needed me at 9 a.m. And so I had like a very small window to sleep. And so I remember a very specific time I went on to set and it was, I was so out of it. It almost felt like a dream. You know, when you're just so sleep deprived that like everything just doesn't seem real. And so I remember doing that. And I, I don't remember what scene I did. I don't remember anything else but i do remember like being like oh my gosh how am i gonna get through this day that was uh that was the weirdest thing i can think of at the moment (laughs) yeah um so if someone asks you for a music recommendation what artist or song do you always recommend okay uh my favorite band is a band called Steam Power Giraffe. They're pretty underground. Do you know Steam Power Giraffe? I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it's, I'm writing uh, this down. So it's a very sp- okay. So I'm gonna so, so so it's basically so okay. Let me give you the full story. They used to be street performers, right? <laughs> and they used to uh, um, uh, play on the street in San Francisco. They made a band and they dress up as robots and sing about being robots. I know that's an incredible niche. I know that's like, that's a very specific type of uh, genre, but it's really yeah. good. And they switch up their lineup a lot. So they have like a lot of different versions of songs. So uh, I, uh, I love Steam Power Giraffe and it's my favorite band. Uh, and uh, yeah, I encourage you and everyone who's listening to, to go look them up. They're great. Oh, cool. Yeah, I will. Um... Also, I'll look them up right after the interview. Okay. I'm excited to listen to them. I don't know why I just completely forgot how to spell giraffe. So I think I spelled it completely wrong, but. Me too. How do you. (laughs) Wait a second. (laughs) Oh my God. Don't let Google do that. Yeah. I haven't been school in a minute. (laughs) Yeah. Um, oh, I thought of, I um, remember the random fact about... Oh, go for it. That, yeah. <laughs> see, again, this is random because this was um, at the beginning of the interview and I'm <laughs> still thinking about it. Um, <laughs> but there's, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Shazam. Um, oh, a long time ago. But yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's my favorite movie ever. And when and I found out like there was um a scene or a line in the movie that Zachary Levi um just uh like added in. Mm-hmm. Um it wasn't in the script. And so every time that scene comes on, I <laughs> remember that Oh, that it was an ad lib? Yeah. Really? So, Do you remember the line? Yeah. yeah, it was, he was, now I'm blanking on the villain's name, but yeah. he was fighting um, the villain in um, at the toy store. 
and he ran into like this Batman mm-hmm. statue thing um, that <laughs> said, I am Batman. And so he picked it up and he said, get him Batman and threw it at him. And that line, he like wasn't in the script. Really? That was ad-libbed? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. I got to rewatch that movie now. <laughs> yeah. I Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go on, go on. I was just going to say, it's my favorite movie in the world, so I watch it all the time. I've seen it like a hundred times. So. Really? <laughs> yeah. I got, yeah, I got I to gotta, uh, hop on that train with you. I got to try to, uh, uh, I got to rewatch Shazam and, and yeah. remember it more. But that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I I think I could probably, like, um, just like recite every line from it cause, oh. from the movie because I've seen it so many times. I get but, that. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, um, what personality trait has gotten you in the most trouble? Oh gosh, my personality trait that's gotten me in the most trouble. Um. Oh, I'm I'm not a huge fan of confrontation. That's probably <laughs> that's probably that's probably ended me up in a in a, in a in a few bad situations. I uh yeah, that um uh, uh I'm very good at saying the wrong thing at a wrong time. I'm I, it's almost a talent. It's almost impressive. Uh and so, <laughs> I think those two have definitely aided in me. Yeah. In the, uh, 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 yeah, nothing in amazing situations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, um, I don't know why this just made me think of, or that just made me think of this, but like always, um, kind of laughing at the worst times, like yes. these super, like these serious situations. And for some reason you just start laughing and you can't have stop. to laugh. You have to. I mean, I don't yeah. understand why more people don't understand this. Sometimes yeah. it just like you get the giggles and you have to laugh. And yeah, it's like, yeah you're right. It's it's sometimes the worst moment imaginable. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I 100% know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, when you're having a bad day, what is your go-to comfort show or movie? Ooh, go-to comfort show or movie. Um, I don't usually go to TV or movies for comfort. I usually go to video games, actually. Um, and so I like to play, like, No Man's Sky uh, or... Um, there's this one like really simple game on PlayStation Four that's called uh, Race to the Sun. I like to do that a lot. Um, if it had to be a TV show, um, How I Met Your Mother is a, is one I I like to go to because um, yeah. you know that's just an incredible show. Um, yeah. So I, I like to go to that um, or like a lot of anime. If like you know I've been uh, rewatching uh, uh, like Death Note and things like that. And so, uh, uh, yeah, like, I, I kind of like scatters. I don't really have, like, one specific thing. Yeah. Um, well, How I Met Your Mother is one of my favorite shows, so. It's so good. We have the same yeah. TV taste, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How I Met Your Mother is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to, like, swap TV shows. Good. We should. I, yeah. yeah, I bet you have a lot I should look up. I got a couple, too. I got I a couple think- good ones. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, so, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so my last question for you, and I I really don't want to ask this because I don't want to um, stop talking to you. I'm having the best time. Yeah, so. me too. Me too. No, this has been so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my last question for you is who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Ooh. It's cheesy, but definitely my mom. I know, I know that's what everyone says, but uh, yeah, my mom, I would not be doing anything 
uh, without her, uh, her support has been incredible for like me being able for my career and just like who I am as a person. And so uh, my, yeah, my mom is definitely a real life superhero for sure. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it hit her or John Cena, cause that man. Uh, <laughs> oh. <j> jacked. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, 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 definitely my mom. Definitely my mom. Oh, cool. I love that. Yeah, my mom and my sister, just they're my best friends and <laughs> my superheroes. Yeah, so. yeah, I get that. Family's yeah. everything, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I have it's, to agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for calling in. I had the best time talking to you. You have made my week. So thank oh, you. No, thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yeah, I love doing this. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. I, this, is, this has been a blast. I, anytime you want to talk about TV shows, let me know. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will. Yeah, okay. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you thank so much. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank Have a great you. day. Bye. Bye. Bye.